question respects race relations. This is our sixth question of the year. In 2010, when the United States elected its first African-American president, it was a milestone for America, whatever one's politics. Yet, within that very president's first term, the white policeman arrested a black college professor in Cambridge, Massachusetts, seemingly for breaking into his own home. Tonight, the nation grapples with the shooting of an unarmed black youth in the state of Florida. In the state of Texas, the United States Justice Department has filed suit to block the implementation of new voter ID laws said by some to unfairly target <coughs> minority voters. Now, each of these cases and others have been and remain controversial. Maine today is the least diverse state in the United States, according to the 2010 National Census. But as Mainers, and as candidates, and as the United States Senator potential. What is your sense of race relations in America today? And what role, if any, in that picture does the federal government have to play? And we would start with Ms. Hill, three minutes. Well, thank you for that question. Um, I uh, was honored to be a delegate to some friends here. In 2008, when Barack Obama was nominated to be the Democratic candidate and then ultimately won the election, and it was thrilling. And I think it was a great um, historic moment for our culture. Um, but I would say right now, um, first and foremost, blacks and minorities need what white people need in America, and that that's jobs. I think um, the economy is uh, creating um, turmoil uh, within families and community, communities, and there's just uh, a struggle that is um, apparent at every level of society. So in order to improve everything, including race relations, we need to uh, move forward with uh, getting this economy on track. And I would suggest just briefly that the way to do that is through um, investment in infrastructure, um, making sure that our children are educated, putting resources towards education, research, and development, um, and obviously changing the landscape in terms of the way we tax, um, creating an economy that's fair or everybody pays their fair share. So the big picture is that we need jobs. Um, jobs will help blacks, jobs will help whites, jobs will help everyone in America. Um, with respect to some of the uh, very controversial examples that were given, the Juan Martin case is something that raises a lot of issues, not just race, uh, gun laws, uh, the role of organizations like ALEC that have um, created these standard ground laws across the country that enable racists to be empowered and uh, commit violent crimes against minorities and not held accountable. So there's a lot of things that go along with these specific examples. But with respect to race itself, it's going to be a constant challenge to balance the, um, uh, the, the, the obvious need to redress historic racial discrimination with the desire to treat everyone equally now. Um, I would say that um, in terms of Maine, I just came from the Cesar Chavez uh, event at First Parish Church, and what they're trying to do there is, I mean, we do not only have the whitest population in Maine, we have the oldest population. And so if we're going to move forward as a society and as a community here in Maine, we need new people, we need, a, a, we need people to come in and work, and I would suggest that uh, Maine welcome uh, minorities and people from the way. Um, I would love to see a uh, more diverse population here. I think it would be healthy uh, for our economy, healthy for our community, and address some of these um, race questions that, that come up in some of these examples that you gave. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dill. Uh, Mr. Hink, the same question regarding late race relations in America. Uh, three minutes. Yes, well, Certainly when it comes to race relations, uh, one aspect and one important aspect is uh, economic and the need for uh, opportunity uh, across the spectrum in the United States. You saw that that was increasing. 
increasingly the theme that Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King had um, late in his efforts uh, to improve the situation for um, black Americans and other Americans in the United States. Um, I do think that uh, we have made some improvements since then. Um, but uh, you can overemphasize that when you see how deep-seated sometimes uh, racial animus can be. Uh, you know, the case of uh, Trayvon Martin, uh, although we don't have all the facts, uh, one of the problems is it didn't appear as though the local authorities were that interested in gathering the facts once the observables had been assessed and uh, uh, it didn't seem as though the victim uh, brought the same response that you would expect we would get from our police. Uh, I think there's a federal role. That case isn't federal. That needs to be handled locally. A U.S. Senator would really have nothing to do with that. Um, however, the civil rights uh, legislation was important in America. I support it. Um, uh, certain hate crimes uh, can be uh, potentially federal. Uh, there's also aspects that are, are just require leadership in all areas of our government. But I also think there's a dynamic that's sometimes uh, ignored. Uh, we have uh, perhaps inadvertently sometimes pitted uh, poor people against each other because of the classifications, the race classifications. Uh, uh, poor people, disadvantaged people, uh, suffer uh, in this society uh, more than do people that are advantaged. Uh, the police are harder on folks who are poor, regardless of what their color is. Um, years ago, when I had long hair, and I was young, I found out sometimes people who fit in those categories would get more attention, critical attention from the police. It was enough to tell me what it must be like for someone even less um, uh, uh, accepted coming before uh, police. And I wanted to remember what it was like to sometimes be targeted by uh, law enforcement. Uh, look, I'd say we're making great uh, improvement. Uh, my daughter uh, had been at uh, Wayne Fleet School and went to King Middle School. Uh, there, some 30 languages are spoken by the students. And she had a tremendous educational experience along the lines of what we hope for, where the diversity of the student body helped her learn and helped the whole school. And I think it's working sometimes. Thank you, Mr. Dean. Now, the same question by rotation to you, Mr. Pollard, on race relations, three minutes. Thank you, Reverend Nevada. So I think that when it comes to race relations in America, I think it would be very valuable for all of us as Americans to embrace the dream of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And he is another of my primary heroes for the inspiration in my life. Um, I read the read his speeches and I listen to them and the speech where I think now I'm talking Um, it, 
the second was trying to make it like more good. Um, but we, we now, we are at a global village. We are all members of one family. And we need to adapt to that reality very quickly. Um, I do agree that economic development is the, the key. Um, and I think there are a number of ways to bring about economic development in America. I think focusing on education should be the primary solution at all levels, from pre-kindergarten through, through graduate school. Um, I think we need to, one thing we can do as far as education goes is I think there are a lot of Americans who may be willing to volunteer to help teach fellow Americans and certain skills for how to be prepared for job interviews and, and the basic literacy and other um, skills like that. And, uh, I'm sorry. Um, and also fostering entrepreneurship. And I think one other issue is that we are over-regulated as a society. The, the regulations are very cumbersome. And as someone who runs a small business, I'm intimately familiar with the business by the many complex rules. So I think simple rules will make it much easier for our business to prosper. Thank you, Mr. Paul. My rotation now, back to you. Mr. Dunlap, three minutes on the same question regarding race relations. <coughs> Thank you, Representative Adams. To clarify the question about what does the what role does the federal government play? That is correct. Thank what you. role of any with the federal government? I think in everything that we discussed tonight, aside from national defense, the federal government probably can play no stronger role in any topic we talk about other than race relations. Other than race relations, uh, the reality is that racist tension exists across class lines. Um, I have worked in a lot of different worlds. I worked in kitchens in pretty fat times when it was plausible to charge $18.99 for a boneless, skinless chicken breast with some rice peel on I can tell you that the divisions of, of, along the lines of not only race, but religion and gender are profound. What's happened in this country since 1865 has probably been a change of dialogue, but nonetheless, the problems still remain. Without such advances as the Voting Rights Act, especially Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act, which gave the Department of Justice review of state congressional and legislative redistricting plans before they could be implemented to prevent racial gerrymandering, this is the type of thing that the federal government plays a very, very strong role in to make sure that people are, in fact, held as equals before the law. And that's the only mechanism which we can put in place to assure that everyone's rights are guaranteed is that role of the federal government. I agree that we had a great deal of progress along the lines of race relations, but there is still an awful lot of setbacks and work to be done. One of the things that Representative Adams referred to in his opening remarks on this question was the issue of voter ID laws. We are still struggling under this cloud of the Federal Real ID Act, which was supposed to make us safer. And I will challenge anyone that has made anybody safer, because the terrorists that attacked us didn't get into the country with state driver's licenses. They got into the country with visas issued by the United States Department of State. Indeed, it's probably the most cynical anti-immigrant piece of legislation we've seen since the Chinese Exclusion Acts of the 1870s. The federal government has a very, very strong role to play here. It has a great deal of influence on how we approach each other within our communities, because there is that assurance that people are to be treated equally, regardless of their race, regardless of their nationality, regardless of their religion. And we have yet to include gender in that pantheon of equality we should be doing as a as a nation and as a